Hi guys, this is Dr. Samali Azad. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to go over some of the uh, cranial bones and also as well as the facial bones and some of the bone marking that are associated with these structures. First thing that we're going to do, when you look at the scar, you will see these marking, these lines that are over the cranium part. These are nothing more than a remnant of what you see in a child. In a child, all the bones are already open because they require for exiting through the pelvic canal. So as they close, they produce these lines all over the uh, cranium part. So if you look at this one here, this is the first one right on top of the baby's skull. There is an opening here known as anterior fontanelle. And there is also one in the back known as a posterior fontanelle on the back of the baby's skull. There are a couple of other fontanelles also located, one known as anterolateral and the other one known as the posterolateral. The anterolateral also known as a sphenoid fontanelle and the posterolateral one also known as a mastoid fontanelle. All of these fontanelles at some point during the baby's age, they're going to close down and when they close down, they produce this connection between the bones, such as anterior fontanelle. When it closes down, the name changes becomes bregma. And bregma is the one that ultimately fuses a formation of this suture, known as the coronal suture, which is going to be connecting the frontal bone, the two parietal bones, right and left parietal bone. The posterior fontanelle, when it closes, becomes lambda. And lambda is the one that produces this suture that you can see extend on this part, known as the lambdoid suture. And it's going to be connecting the occipital bone with the two parietal bone. Also, the two parietal bone, they're going to fuse by way of sagittal suture that is sitting right down the center. The other suture that also is going to be present is this suture right here known as a squamous suture, which is connecting the frontal bone, parietal bone, and also the temporal bone that are located in that part. Some of the other things that was worthy of saying when you're looking at the cranium is presence of this bump on the back of the head which is known as external occipital protuberance that is a little bit that sits right on the back of the uh, neck, uh, back of the head region. As you come down here and you go and look at the floor part of the uh, skull, you can see the main one is going to be presence of this huge hole known as a foramen magnum and there are two sections here, soft area. These are articulating process where your first cervical vertebrae is going to be connected. These are known as occipital condyle. As you go laterally from occipital condyle, you see the presence of this mass of tissue known as the mastoid process, which are a pair of them located on either side. And from there, if you go extend a little bit forward, you see this fang lock looking a structure known as a styloid process of the temporal bone. We have several different type of a styloid process in our body. That's why when we identify this one, we have to make sure that mention that is related to which bone. Right between those two, you see there is a small foramen, there is a small hole there. This is known as a stylomastoid foramen, and this is a foramen where cranial nerve number seven is going to be exiting, which is produce function. To the facial region. As we go a little bit farther down, they see the connection that happened here between the occipital bone comes toward the facial region. This section known as the jugum part, which comes down and introduces itself right into the or to the nasal cavity. Right above this region, which is going to be the roof of the mouth, you can see this L shape, which are a pair of them attached to each other, known as the palatine bones located on that part. From there, we come to the facial area. You can see that there is a couple of holes here. These are known as a supraorbital foramen, and there's a couple of holes in the bottom of the eye or, or, or the orbital region. These are known as infraorbital foramen. You come right down the section here, you get to the two nasal bones, and as you go right to the media, you can see this little bone here. This is a lacrimal bone, a very small bone. And it has this lacrimal canal, which is draining the tears as it goes down 
to the nasal cavity and ultimately to the outside. The bone that is located right in this section, this is a maxilla or maxillary bone, which is produced to make, uh, make up the upper part of the jaw. From there you come to your cheekbone, known as zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone, it has a process that goes posteriorly. This is known as a temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which is attaching to this part, this little process, which is part of the temporal bone. This one is known as zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Then, as you come down here, you will see there's a little opening. This is an external auditory meatus where you know the sound enter into your ear and ultimately perceive as what you can hear. From there you come a little bit lower, you get to the jaw area. I'm gonna disconnect this jaw so we can see a little bit better. As you can see here there's a connection here and also we can see right the area of the uh, posterior part of the mandible is going to be attached. This is known as mandibular condyle which is going to be attached right into this area known as a mandibular fossa and produce a temporomandibular joint in our uh, jaw region. Then you can see this mandibular notch, this kind of a depression right alongside here, which is come and produce this little structure known as the conoid process of the mandible. When you go down from this section toward the angle of the jaw, this section is known as a ramus and the body, then you can see the mental foramen, that we have a pair of them sitting right on that part. Right down the center, we have the mental, mental protuberance and mental tubercle, there are a pair of them located on either side. Looking inside the orbitals, you can see this fissure. This is known as the orbital fissure. And this is a region which is some of the artery and the nerves that are coming all the way toward the out. As I disconnect this part, this is known as the cranium vault, which is producing the roof of the skull. And we can expose the cranium fossa. As you can see here, it includes lots of different holes and also different shapes. Some of the important structures that are worthy of talking here, number one, this is part of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone that is sits here and it sticks upward and has attachment to Fox cerebri part of the brain. You come back down here, you can see this kind of suture region. This is producing another bone that is sitting inside the floor of the cranium known as the sphenoid bone. Sphenoid bone has two wings. This is a lesser wing, and the larger wing of it extends all the way that you can see actually parts of it in this part. Now, right down the center, you can see this little depression. This is known as a cella torsica, or Turkish saddle, because that's what it looks like. It. And inside this little depression, uh, or the uh, cella torsica, is located your pituitary gland, which is secreting several different types of a hormone. Right on the kind of supralateral, that one, there are a couple of foramina here. These are known as optic canal or optic foramen that transmit your cranial nerve number two or cranial or the optic nerve, which as you can see here, as you can show it, comes up right through the eye region and where the nerves are coming toward the outside. Then as you come down here, you can see there are four holes in here or foramina. The first one that is oval shaped, known as a foramen ovale. You go to the medial side, become foramen lacerum. You go to the lateral side, becomes foramen spinosum, and you go rostrally, becomes foramen rotundum. As you come back down here over this hill, down here you're going to have your jugular foramen, and also this foramen are here, or the meatus, which is known as internal acoustic meatus. And that pretty much is going to be covering things that you should know for your craniofacial bones.